I'm going to be building this sheet metal break in this episode of Making Stuff. Bob here and welcome to another making stuff video today I'm going to be building a sheet metal break because I need to complete a job that I paid somebody else to do over five months ago now I'm sick of waiting on them I'm sick of the excuses I figured I'm just gonna build a sheet metal break and finish this job myself now what I need to do is I need to wrap some windows with some flashing and the problem is they are 42 inches wide now the widest sheet metal break I could find to purchase was 36 inches wide. So that's why I have the need to build one to go that extra little bit of width so I can wrap these windows. So I'm going to get started with this project by starting out over here at the bandsaw. Alright, so I know a bunch of you are wondering why did I cut a notch in this piece of angle iron? Well, I've temporarily set the hinge here with a clamp to show you why. And that's so that the hinge, the edge of the hinge will sit flush with the edge of this angle iron. And that is so that when I put the next piece of angle iron on here, this will be doing the bending with that hinge recessed in there, now it will fold right along this edge right here and there won't be a big gap for this part of the hinge, this pivot part of the hinge. So that's why I cut the notch in the angle iron. Okay, so I have the base plate all finished and the hinges are attached. So next I'm going to work on the hinge piece that actually moves. And right now I have it temporarily clamped to the base plate hinges. So I need to drill and tap those holes next. All right, so I have the hinge piece all finished. So next I'm going to add a piece of flat bar right here across the base plate. And that's going to hold the sheet metal down flat as this piece comes up and bends it. Okay, so I've got a piece of flat bar to go on here, but I noticed there's a little bit of a gap here in this flat bar between it and the base plate, and it's just because it's such a long distance here. So to help keep this more rigid, I'm going to take a piece of angle iron and mount it on top like so. All right, so I need to drill a hole through the top point of this angle iron. So what I'm going to do is just drill it from the back side and then work my way up with larger bits till I get the hole size that I need. And now that I've got the holes drilled in the top point of the angle iron, I need to transfer those same holes to the flat bar, which I've got clamped underneath here. And I'm just going to do that with a transfer punch. And 
And then I'll just transfer the holes from the flat bar to the base plate using the same transfer punch. Okay, so I've got all three holes drilled in the base plate, the flat bar, and the angle iron. So the way this is going to work is you would put a piece of metal that you want to bend in here, and you put the flat bar and the angle iron on top of it, and then just insert the bolt through the holes, like so. And then we would tighten this down, then you move this up to bend the metal. So it would make sense though to have some type of a wing nut or a handle up here so that every time you make a bend, you can loosen this and then move the metal around if you need to make a second bend or just pull it out altogether. Okay, so this is all assembled. The last thing left to do is to add some handles to it so I can bend some metal with it. All right, so I put the flashing into the sheet metal brake and I was able to bend it and I got some really nice long bends out of this metal brake and I was able to make all of these pieces that I needed to wrap my windows. Okay, so this tool was able to bend all of the metal that I needed to fix my windows. But if you were gonna build one of these yourself or I was gonna do this again, there are a couple of things that I would change. The first thing I would change is I would weld some tabs to the back of the base plate. Now this will help keep the machine from wanting to rock backwards when you're actually bending the metal. The second thing I would change is I would make the tool as narrow as possible because the wider you make the tool, the harder it is to hold the metal down to the base plate when you bend it. And finally, this was a no weld project and I didn't use a welder to build it. But if you had a welder, it would make sense to go back and weld up a few things like the angle iron and the flat bar to help make it more rigid. And one of the nice things about not using the welder is that I can take the tool apart when I'm finished and store it away much easier. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching. <music>